Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Blue Monday Live Q&A for a Wednesday night, the show where we do utterly no preparation whatsoever, and you do the entire running order. So to stop me waffling, get as many questions as you can in the chat right now. We'll try and answer as many as we can. We normally do all of them, dare I suggest, unless it gets really, really packed. So we're going to hang around for the foreseeable future. And we're going to take all of your questions. Fill the chat with questions over on YouTube. We're live on Twitter. We're live on Facebook as well. Whichever platform you're watching, well, the first thing you need to do is hit a button that's that shaped and try and um, get the stream moving and draw some um, more eyeballs to us. But please, please do get your questions in and look at the two super brains I've got here to answer them. Um, <laughs> Craig Fimbo, how is it Hello. going, sir? Yeah, all right, very good. Thank you very much. I've uh, slightly rejigged my display behind me. Look, I've got my champions book on display, like Rich has. I noticed Rich the oh, other day nice. he had his uh, champions 91 92 book in the background. So, yeah, very, very nice too. And down at the bottom there, this is uh, I, don't, I don't know if you're going to go on strike here, Seb, because when we were we were just chatting before we went, you were you're on the top, weren't you? But you've been relegated to the bottom now. That's all right. I, I know my place. Don't worry. Like Craig, I've also redesigned my pod area. I have a shirt. Oh, no, that way. I have a shirt. Now. <laughs> oh, I can't do it. A shirt now <laughs> hanging up. Uh, Rich said, can't you get something in the background to make it look less less dull? So I've uh, I've done that as well. So the amount of times I've tried to point <laughs> at Paul Mariner. There you go. I've got him. I've got him there. And look, look, my my daughter's there and there as well. And there, that one's actually that one should be easier. It's not in reverse. Right. Keep your questions coming. I can see it filling up. If you want a shout out, I think we've already said hi to FPL Tractor, Charlie, uh, Gary, welcome, Michael, welcome, Julian. And we have questions coming in. Keep them coming. Um, get us a nice um a nice sort of long tail of questions, and we will get into them. Um, let's start here with uh, Dan. Um, Seb, let's go to you for that. Which young player do you think will benefit most from the new coaching regime? I assume, um, as I like to reframe every question that comes in, Seb, <laughs> I assume Dan's referring to um, Kieran McKenna's uh, background back in the day there with Spurs and with Manchester United and working with young players. And every time someone mentions Steve Cooper, um, Swansea and now Forrest, it's all, oh, he's good working with young players. Hopefully they say the same things about um, Kieran McKenna. Um, what's, what's your view on on that as a whole, Seb, and a, a particular player that um, may benefit? I've got a couple I'd like to see. Can we class Rakeem Harper as a young player? I know he's not yeah. one of our own, but he's only tw is he 20, 21. I'd really like to see what McKenna can get out of him because obviously, you know, he's, he's worked with, you know, some of the best midfielders in the world. So you'd like to think that's an area he's going to be very, very comfortable in. And, and Harper joined with this big reputation, didn't he? And we were all really, really excited. Didn't quite work the first three or four months of the season in that kind of midfield role alongside Evans. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to see if he can get something out of him because if he could, he could be one that, you know, rises hopefully throughout the leagues with us a bit like Edmondson. Um, um, and I think the guys mentioned it on the Sunday show. I know he's not at the club at the minute, but I'm quite excited to see what he can do within Darba if he comes back in off loan from Salford. You know, naturally left-footed player, uh, a ball-playing centre-half, and if we're going to persist with this three at the back and, you know, he likes that left-footed balance, I'd really like to see what he can get out of him in terms of bringing the ball forward because we know Wolfenden's comfortable at it, Edmondson comfortable at it, but Darba could be one, I think, that could really look to push on. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um, keep your questions coming. If you want a shout-out, um, give us a... Give us a um, holler in there, and we'll try and um, we'll try and get it to you. Let's go on. Yeah, um, who, who had um, two questions in in the sweet state for that one, Stuart? Well done. We needed to talk about it, didn't we? Views on keeper? Can we keep Walton? Um, before you give your opinion, Craig, are you able to give a bit of a pricey on um, the situation as it stands right now with uh, Christian Walton and Brighton and wherever he may or may not end up? Yeah, well, I think as as has been reported um, in the EADT, we think that he's Brighton have like triggered the 
return clause um, on his contract that they can do during the transfer window. Um, but it had like a seven day calling off period, I think. So having triggered it after the, the Gillingham match, um, he can obviously play at Bolton. Um, so, yeah, I think it's probably just a, a decision now needs to make whether they've, they've done it for, you know, to hurry up a reason and, and get a decision made. Um, I know that they're sending out their current third choice goalkeeper, I believe, on loan um, to the championship. So they're either going to want him back to act as, crikey, what a job that would be, you know, the, the third choice goalkeeper who just turns up on a match day and warms people up and then gets into his suit and disappears sort of thing. Um, or get us into you know producing a, an offer on it putting an offer on the table but you know you think financially i'm not entirely sure that's as easy as it sounds really if you're christian walton and you're sitting on a premier league contract until june july um are you going to knock on the head i don't i suppose they could in some way you know arrange a signing on fee that would swallow some of it and um comfort you know cushion the blow of, of moving from a Premier League wage to a high League One lower championship wage. Um, I think that will be the sticking block. He says he wants to stay. Um, he's obviously going to be playing every match. Um, I just think that the finances may not quite work out, but you know, you, you know, you never know. It could be some very bad timing as well because it seems like goalkeepers are in very short supply, and it's like mental in the Championship because. Um, Sarkic, the Birmingham keeper who was on loan, got injured. So did the QPR reserve keeper who's replacing the other keeper who's off at AFCON. So they were immediately two championship clubs were then straight in for a keeper. Swansea then sent theirs on loan to, where is it? was it Peterborough? It was Peterborough, yeah. Yeah, Peterborough and signed the Milton Keynes keeper, which now means oh, they nice. would be looking as... so. It seems like having a goalkeeper that's actually under a permanent contract is uh, quite an important thing at the moment. And um, yeah, I think there's there's still going to be... And remember, you're not going to wait until the end of the window for keepers, are you? They need to be done right now, don't they? Yeah. The thing is, Christian Walton's a... He's not a League One goalkeeper, is he? You know, debut, debut apart, he's, he's not a League One goalkeeper. He shouldn't be playing League One football. He should be, He's a championship goalkeeper, isn't he? He's just... Just a normal, solid, stand-up goalkeeper, isn't he? You haven't got to worry about him at all. He'll just get on with his job. There's no thrills. There's no mistakes. He just does his job. And I say he's he's worth every penny if we can get him. I'm just concerned that we'll fall, fall, um, fall short in terms of wages. Yeah, yeah. Um, keep your questions coming, guys. Um, I'll warn you, there might be a... <laughs> this is a bit like going to um, Wagamama or something. There might be a 10, 15-minute wait for your food as everything... <laughs> Everything gets answered, but we'll try and get. Can we, can um, we give people like the, those little? I'm going to call them vibrators that they put in their pockets. <laughs> that's but, Frank. Uh, that's Frankie and Benny's. Don't ask Richard about Frankie. Better than terrible news that Oxford might be moving um, stadium as well. Um, woof. Uh, right, let's get in to another one. Let's go to you, Seb, um, Gary, and what is that? Is that R2D2 from? I believe uh, it's C3PO. C3PO, yeah, it's like... sorry, it's a different one, isn't it? Yeah. There you go. My you out you outnerded me then, um, Craig, which I'm quite pleased but, about. Bloody old man. I don't think I don't think knowing C who C3PO is <laughs> it's, can, it's st that's still classes as outnerded. Nerd. Or just maybe a complete lack of general pop culture. Um, who should be our number one target in the transfer window? Says Gary, I think we need um another out and out striker. Um what what does the rather than general um players say? What does the squad need as such the the left back area kind of screams out as well a little bit doesn't it you know Coulson did wild say he was four to six weeks away I think maybe two weeks ago he's back at the club now isn't he after the treatment up at Middlesbrough so you know are they going to keep him around I'm guessing so because they might have sent him back already like we uh terminated the Louis Barry contract Penny's looked better in the last two games he got the assist obviously against uh Gillingham and he has looked better but I, I think if you could get a a Wes Burns replica on the left-hand side of the pitch, it would make such a difference, wouldn't it? Could Carl Edwards be sort of trained to to fulfil that 
role, maybe that would be an interesting one. But left back is one for me, or left wing back rather, is one that could scream out because you can see the, the havoc that Burns causes on the right-hand side. If we could just replicate half of that on the left, Christ, we'd have some real, real options going forward, wouldn't we? With regards to a striker, I mean, you know, I guess it all depend on what happens with the uh, with the guys we've got. If we make Bond permanent, then there's no real need to get somebody else in because Norwood's probably still going to be around for the rest of the season. Piggott was the big summer signing, who's the only one of all the strikers who's still contracted to be here after the end of this season. Jackson might well might, might well move on. Um, but I think if, if Bond joins permanently, then there's no need to get a striker in because I, I think we'd be okay in that area. So for me, the, the left back or left, left wing back position uh, could make a real, real difference. Beautiful stuff. Um, FBL tracked. I think we've covered that, haven't we? With QPR and Posh getting keepers. Um, are there any other championship clubs on the lookout for one? Quick scan. Well, MK might be an equal worry, like we said. Um, I don't know whether Derby will replace Marshall, who's gone um, to QPR to cover Archer and or Dieng. Um, Di Cornell might be available if Bender's gone from Swansea to... Um, Swansea to Peterborough. I'm just scanning up the table. I think it'd be interesting to see if 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 Walton does go, it'd be interesting to see what we do do in terms of re- replacements. Now, do we have we got a, a loanee lined up just to get us to the end of the season, or have we got a? You'd have to give you'd have to give Faith the Clagkey, wouldn't you? Surely, you know we've paid good money for him. Was it a three year contract? They'd have to surely back him for at least six months to see if he can really make the the step up or move on. Yeah, I suppose. Well, I suppose it depends if they're still going balls out for promotion. If you can hang your hat on Hladke, you know, if, if you've only got and then you've only got two senior goalkeepers in any case, haven't you? So apparently, all you have to say, Craig, for a one hundred percent laugh ratio is balls out, and um, we both giggle like children. Uh, guys, keep the questions coming. Awesome, awesome stuff. Please, wherever you're watching, hit the thumbs up button. It only takes you like a millisecond. Just do it on your YouTube or on your laptop or on your iPad or whatever where you're watching on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and it just helps bring um, a few more people across to the stream. Hopefully it gets us a few more questions. If you haven't already, please follow on Twitter, like on Facebook, and subscribe over on YouTube for all of our lovely, although I would say that, content. Uh, Craig, is it your go? Uh, Which players would you like to see sign this transfer window? Are there specific players? Um, uh, Seb sort of outlined a a position. Um, which you didn't seem to disagree with, Craig. Um, any specific players other than obviously um, those that are on loan? I don't think I don't think we need to sign any more, do we? Particularly, you know, if, as as Seb says, if we can get a left wing back, stroke midfielder, stroke left back, I'm, I, I think we've got enough in the squad to to see us in terms of volume of numbers. I, Seb's initial answer in regards to Harper, that's that's again, I you know. I banged a drum from Harper from pre-season that I think he could he could potentially play that um, Morsey role. I, you know, don't get me wrong, Morsey's been bloody ridiculous at it so far um, in terms of output and assists and carrying the ball up the field and things. He doesn't always look entirely um, natural at it, but I think you know in terms of a fit, that seems to be the marauding midfield is is what Harper's turned into, hasn't he? After his starting off as a defensive midfielder um i suppose it might it might come to who goes might not it if as seb says jackson might disappear the you know, when's the last time anyone saw john nolan he'll be paid off when he surely crikey surely swansea will bid for fraser as well won't they yeah exactly that yeah and again it wouldn't would that be it wouldn't be a, a loss in terms of where we're at, at the moment in terms of him being used Crikey didn't even make the bench did he on on saturday um so i think Maybe, maybe if if we get uh, another central defender, to, if we're playing three central defenders, you're going to need more than Burgess and then dear old Enciala as as cover for them. I'd have thought um, maybe there's a young um, defender somewhere we can we can have in as as cover. Apparently so, um, but yeah, more more of that maybe soon. Um, Seb, it looks like a couple of people asked the same question here. Uh, Michael and Andrew. Um, in terms of players loaned out, is there any value in any of them coming back? Being as it seems to be the fashion to recall everybody at the moment, every club. I don't know if it's a COVID thing, but everyone's just taking up the break clause, aren't they, and recording everybody? Yeah, I mean, if you look at the the, the big the big names that we've got, the, the bigger clubs, you know, Dobra isn't really setting the, the world alight down at Colchester. Tyree Simpson obviously doing really well at Link, uh, at Swindon, sorry, but he's playing week in, week out, which surely is going to be much better for his development than coming back here and maybe getting the odd 
cameo off the bench. So happy for him to stay uh, to stay out there. And then Darba up at Salford. I don't know if he's playing regularly uh, up there at the moment, but if he is, again, I would personally leave him there because you know these guys playing week in, week out in League Two is going to be far, far better for them than playing the occasional under twenty three game and getting the occasional you know few minutes off the bench. I, I would leave them out and then take stock of the situation in the uh, in the in the summer. Like like Craig said, our squad is massive. You know, we we don't need to be adding bodies back to it. We need to be looking to shift probably four or five of the the, the dead wood, shall we say, out um, and sort of trim it down a little bit, I think. Dead wood. Beautiful. Um, Mark, is Norwood's return to the first team the best comeback story in ITFC recent memory? Will his contract get expended? Will there be a Hollywood movie? Now, Craig, for all of the people that like to accuse us podcasters of being um, wise asses and never admitting I was wrong, listen to this next 10 seconds. I thought Norwood was completely done. That ship had sailed and he was gone. So I was completely wrong about Norwood and very pleased to admit it, considering his um, goal output of late. Um, best comeback in ITFC history. I think um, Mark may be, in, may be um, slightly um, over-egging the pudding then, but it's been brilliant, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah it's been brilliant. And he, he has been exactly as we hoped he would have been had he been fit for any period of time beforehand. And he... I don't know. He says about his contract. I can't. I don't reckon his contract will be renewed, will it? I think we'll just get to the end of the end of the season, and he'll he'll bang in a few goals, and he'll be 32 next season, and we'll we'll probably move on. But I think we'll get as much use out of him as we can between now and the end of the season. Um, you know, if he scores a goal every game between now and the end of the season, happy days. I was, I was reading something interesting actually on. Um, it's either on Twitter. Christ, I can't believe I just said that. I'd read something interesting <laughs> on Twitter, on or or TWTD about. Um, Norwood and um, him being left out by the powers that be or the, the, oh, the, the people behind the scenes. Stick your tinfoil hat on for this bit then, Craig. Well, we're just, I just, we're just, they were just wondering whether the fact that he had been um, told to, or Cook had been told not to play him, is now benefiting us in that he's had an extended break and was training and getting fit and has sort of, his body's recuperated sufficiently rather than him being back and being out for two weeks, then being back, then being out for three weeks, you know, whether that extended break is actually going to perversely benefit him between now and now and May by actually being able to churn out the games. Beautiful stuff. Um, Seb, uh, from Josh, who's that in the picture there? Getting their face mauled. Beautiful. Um, are you surprised we haven't done anything in the market yet? We were told we would be active and wanted to do business early. That's true, actually, um, what Josh says. Mark, Mark Ashton was quite... Um, kind of bullshit about it, you know, I, I'm trying to think when, when he was, when he was sort of quoted, maybe he was just in PR mode, just having hired a new manager. But um, I kind of agree with what Craig just said, um, Seb. Um, it, it, it doesn't need um, much manoeuvring, does it, that squad? No, I don't think so. I'm a little bit surprised nothing's really been done. I think it was one of the AGMs, wasn't it? He came out and said, we'll be active in January. And did he did he refer to it as a reshuffle or a, a restocking or something? I, I, I thought we'd see more outgoings than incomings. But I guess what's happened with COVID over the last what, four weeks now has probably dramatically changed things because a lot of people are now going to want to be stockpiling players to, you know, ensure that fixtures can be played and they've got enough people in the building. I was listening to the Darren McAnthony podcast on my way home from work today, the Peterborough chairman, and he was saying January is proving a nightmare because, you know, clubs are holding on to their players. Nobody wants to let anybody go. There are a few loans available. But trying to get business done is a bit of a nightmare. So I, I guess we're seeing a bit of a a bit of a knock-on on that of people wanting to hold on to the, the quality in the building to protect themselves and the fact that we we are, you know, maxed out in terms of the, the squad numbers. We're allowed, is it 20, 22, isn't it, plus the goalkeepers? We're maxed out there because Louis Barry was obviously 18, so he was, he was young enough to to not qualify for the list. And we're by all accounts, we're maxed out on the salary management cap protocol rules as well, aren't we? So, you know, until somebody moves on, either Walton, you know, goes back officially or or somebody else leaves or gets paid up, I guess we're not going to see anything maybe for a, uh, a week or so yet. Um, Robert, I think... We've covered what a beautiful dog he's got there in his picture. I, don't, I, I love um, looking at people's profile pictures. They're tremendous. So I think we've covered um, Walton and um, Bon so far, Robert. So hopefully that's all done. Uh, Michael, Bart or Walton? Who is the better keeper? Bart on his line, but Walton to control the whole of his area. Can I take that one, boys? Um, I always thought about Bart that Mick and now Gary Rowett know how to play him. And um, when his. Um, strengths are accentuated of which there are many and his sort of 
few weaknesses are hidden. He's a brilliant um, goalkeeper. So I'd have to say Bart, but obviously Walton's got a, a lot of years to maybe get to a higher level than Bart, who has proven himself to be a brilliant championship keeper, but never quite um, went any higher. And my Bet365 app has just flashed to tell me West Ham won Norwich nil, which um, for those people that like that sort of thing will be interested in that news. We will stay as impartial and balanced as ever here, Craig. <laughs> okay. on the bet- in fact, to balance that out, Tottenham nil, Chelsea won. And those are people that like that sort of thing will, will like that just, as well. Just about um, Walton and, and Barton. Yeah, go ahead, go on. Uh, you were at um, Wickham, obviously, weren't you, Ben? And that, yes, that yeah. save that Walton made was very reminiscent of a Bart type save, wasn't it? I was still like thinking that. about how tall you were down, when he made down. that save, Craig. I couldn't quite concentrate. Yeah. Very kind of you. <laughs> um, but you know, but that, do you know what I mean? But that instant fall down to your right and scoop it away from the goal—that was a—that was a Bart type save, which we saw Christ more times than we cared to mention over the course of what, two or three years. Um, and, and to be fair, Walton really hasn't had too much to do. But Bolton aside, the home match—he's—he hasn't been called into action to make those sort of saves. But what he has done is just sort of exude a bit of calm confidence at the back, and you can tell that the guys who are playing in front of him which is completely the opposite to what it looks like when Halaki's stood behind them, is that you know they know that they're in huh, they're in safe hands with uh, with him behind them. How's that for a bit of karma? Goal disallowed. West Ham nil, Norwich nil. I will say no more and I will shut my mouth. All I'll say is, and we've said it many times on the pod, it feels like there's been a split in goalkeeping and Richard and Christian Walton um, kind of did this on the on the interview show we did with him. Um, and it's almost binary, isn't it, as a modern goalkeeper and an old school goalkeeper and being able to play with split centre halves, with these short goal kicks that where the centre halves are literally in the six yard box and needing to slide a straight ball. Did you see, um, uh, who was it? Um, who's Palace goalkeeper? Uh, Butland in the FA Cup at the weekend. Classic example of... Yeah, I heard the podcast about it. Yeah, and he just needed to slide it in. And, you you know, it it seems like there's an old school, new school um, click. And I'd probably put Bart in the old school and Walton maybe in the the new school. Um, There, Chris, uh, nobody seems concerned about playing an attacker rather than a defender wide right. But if you seem to suggest the same on the left, um, Edwards, isn't he a decent potential alternative to... Penny, um, whose go is it? Whose question is that? I think it's it's mine, and I'll, I'll go link on, it Seb. back to like what I said earlier. How, yeah, I, I I don't see why he couldn't really do a job there. You know, he's pretty good defensively. All the times we've seen him in the four two three one on the left hand side, he is the one that will sort of tuck back in and help the fullback and stuff. So he seems to have a good engine. He seems to be decent defensively. We could just get McKenna to coach some form of end product, then that could be really really exciting. Absolutely. Is he is he left footed? No, he cuts in. I think he's right footed, but yeah. he likes to cut in, doesn't he? Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, that's what I just, but it's the same as having if Vincent Young was was playing there, isn't it? In that he'll get t- within 20 yards of the touchline, you know damn well that what's going to happen next is he'll be cutting back to get the cross in, and so does everyone else. Didn't he? Whereas Penny just goes, isn't he? He'll, he'll, if he's not knocking it past us, I want to go, and he's running it, belting into space, and you know, reaching the through balls, which is, he doesn't, you know, if, as you said earlier, Seb, if you can have a, a mirror image of Burns hmm. on the on, on the left, then Christ, you'd be. Happy days, eh? Beautiful. Um, Bits, live reacting to what? What's happening? Have we signed Ronaldo? Bits, you massive sure house. No, we haven't signed Ronaldo, but we we love to have you here, Bits, and we look forward to your sensible question. Um, Let me see. Has he put... (laughs) Oh, he has put... He has put... There you go. He has put a sensible one further down. You can wait to have that answered, Bits. Don't worry. We love you, really. Um, Richard, the ghost of my Frankie and Penny's complaint. Will haunt Oxford if they move at Rich. It will be like um, us knocking down the North Stand, won't it? Um, uh, Oxford moving away from the Frankie and Bennies. Um, Michael, I think you've just answered that, um, Seb, haven't you, about Kane Vincent Young? Uh, Jeff, um, from a Mackham, are you guys going to go on a run and do us a few favours? Um, <laughs> um, who's going? Exactly. Craig, never rely on us to do anything. Um, can, can we, um, you know, we're not involved in the title race, but we could be involved in the title race if we were a nuisance. And can you um, speak a little bit about um, 
the Lee Johnson thing that Ugh. that's not interesting your thoughts on that as well, Craig. Oh, you teed me up for that one. The thing is, if we do go if we do go on a run, I'm not sure it's going to affect Sunderland too much because our next matches are Bolton, Accrington, Wimbledon, Wednesday, Gillingham, Doncaster. I don't think any of those will be troubling um Sunderland anytime soon, are they? Um but yeah, here's hoping we can go on a run and then by the time we do end up getting to play uh, who we got left to play? It's near the top. We're going to Rotherham, but that's not until Easter time, is it? So yeah, no. I'm not entirely sure we can we can help them out too much. Um, and actually, I'd, I'd rather us lose every match if it means that Lee Johnson doesn't get promoted. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable! And oh, no, I thought that, that, I thought bits was a sure house. Then you've just you've just upstaged him there, um, Craig, haven't you? A um, couple of comments quickly, um, Howard. Not sure I get the common view that Edwards could make a left wing back. I, I think you might agree with um, Howard there, Craig, in terms of um, cutting in. I, think I, don't a... know where, I don't know where he does fit in. in, in the cut. Well, although, to be fair, you know, it's not as if we've played two games under McKenna and we've played two different systems under McKenna, haven't we? So he may well fit in nicely once we play the system that suits him. Um, Seb, Rich says, uh, anniversary of our 1-0 win over Arsenal in the League Cup, a rare high. Since two thousand and two, the highest high. He's. I can't think. I can't think of of, of a better one off the top of my head. Seb. No, no, because even in the playoffs in two thousand fifteen, we had an equalised, didn't we? So, yeah, that is probably <laughs> the highlight of the uh, of the last twenty, uh, the last ten years or so. Yeah, brilliant. Someone put a tweet up um, today uh, saying that Fulham are only the second team to score seven goals twice in the season. Peterborough were the other. And I looked and it wasn't the season they put seven past us. It was like I had to do a bit of Googling in my dates there. But obviously, I've still got the PTSD. Right, I'm going to try this. Sorry, but haven't Fulham scored seven away from home? Twice. Yeah, they have. Yeah, Blackburn. Blackburn, wasn't it? Yeah. Last night already. But I'm going to try this again. Bet365 (laughs) is telling me West Ham (laughs) won, Norwich nil on 42 minutes. Let's throw in as well Crew 1, Charlton nil. And VAR has just scrubbed off a Tottenham penalty if you're... If you're watching along um, that whilst you're listening to us, um, enjoy uh, football. Right. Pray silence. Bits has put a sensible question in. OK, let's see if let's see if it actually is. Um, guys, what do you have? Oh, OK. No, he hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> is it your go, Craig? Um, what do you have lined no. up for the 10th win in a row for our magician McKenna? Blue Monday Live. Look, Blue Monday Live will happen once all pandemic stuff is is quiet and down. But... Let, I'll try and I'll try and make Bits's question sensible. Um, how how long can the can the run go? The fixtures look alright, don't they? Yeah, I just counted that our tenth win would be Burton at home. So we've got <laughs> faggots faggots all round after the uh, the Burton match. That favourite food stuff of, of ours. It. And please don't go back into um, podcast history to listen to the last um, slightly politically incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> reference to um, to that word, not made by any of our wonderful Blue Monday team. I will stop digging um, now before that. We've got seven second delay on this, for God's sake. Um, Seb, HCH, do you think that Bon and Norwood are better than Pigger? Um, I, I assume he's asking um, each in each individually. Um, I suspect you think Bon is, but... You get, Give me a toss up between Norwood and Piggott then. Well, Norwood will bring you things that Piggott obviously can't do. So Norwood is your pet, isn't he? I'd say Bon is the best of the three. Uh, I don't think from Piggott you're going to get that sort of nasty, streetwise, in your face kind of thing you get from from Norwood. But all round, I'd imagine Piggott's probably technically a better player. Um, you know, decent, well, very good rather uh, goal scoring uh, at, the, at this level, goal scoring record at this level. Um, but given how we we currently line up and stuff in this league, I think you need that that streetwise, that nasty little streak. And as we've seen with Norwood coming back into the side you know it, it's really really working for us so far so I think the pecking order would be Bond by far and away the best then Norwood then Piggott for me I think it's awesome. poor old Piggott whenever he comes on he's the same at Gillingham he's just he's just trying so desperately isn't he he's just trying trying things and he, as you would do you've only getting 10 minutes in the end of a match whatever it is you've 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 got to try and make an impression but you're trying too hard and, and as a result things aren't, aren't coming off for you as well, he just needs to I, think I would have liked to take certain... the penalty but <laughs> I oh, yeah, that, that, that was a I say, sorry, that was a funny one in, at the weekend. In that, the only reason Chaplin took it is because the ball happened to fall near where yeah. Chaplin was standing when, after Piggott had been thrown to the floor, you know, Chaplin basically picked the ball up and kept hold of it. A lot of managers do have that 
Um, even if it's Ruud van Nistelrooy, um, that the guy who gets fouled doesn't take it. I think Thierry Henry did that, didn't he? Always passed yeah. on the penalty if he'd been fouled for. I was just they, did, say, they didn't know who was taking it on Saturday. They were just they were discussing it between themselves, basically. And Chaplin just was basically wasn't letting go of the ball. Okay. Um, yeah, I was going to say, I think it's a better circumstance for Piggott now um, that there's a sort of front two being played in a few games and there's... Um, it seems like there's a more opportunity for him to get it, at least with a with a front two. And I know I've I've mocked the two up top suggestions a lot, but at least if you're if you're on the bench, you pretty much know you're probably going to get on every game now um, for a reasonable amount. Remember that yeah, old yeah. Um, old Richard Naylor for James Scowcroft substitution at seventy minutes by one of our great old former managers, Craig. Well, yes, absolutely. Well, that's and, and Bon Bon was saying at the weekend that you know him and him and Norwood had been told basically to run the backsides off for 70, 75 minutes, and the plan was always to bring on two strikers to replace them to do exactly the same thing for the last twenty. So yeah, exactly as you say, you know he's got a far more chance of pretty much guaranteed to come on for at least fifteen minutes each match. Um, Michael, who always gives us great contributions, this is probably not his best. What about that young guy who played versus Morsi? Can't remember his name or team. I bet he's talking about Matete from yeah, Fleetwood. Fleetwood, isn't he? But yes, yeah. I suspect he'll be going to um, uh, a higher level um, than us. David, uh, with Richardson doing well at Wigan and so far McKenna getting a great tune out of a Paul Cook squad, is this showing future teams that Cook isn't as great as we all thought? Can I take that one? Um, guys, all will be revealed. When Reading fire Velko Poundovic in about <laughs> 10 days' time and Paul Cook gets the Reading job, uh, won't it? But, um, David, honestly, I hope I hope not. I hope you're wrong because I like Paul Cook and I don't want to see him fail. But you may be right. Who knows? Some you know, some managers just, you know, get off that winning run and never find it back. But, um, yeah, I, 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 still, I know a lot of people don't. I still have a lot of goodwill to, to Paul Cook and I, I hope he does well in his... In his in his next job, and I hope he's not a, a busted flush now without um, Richardson. Right, um, keep your questions coming. This is uh, tremendous. It'd be stuff. interesting to see where he where he does end up, wouldn't it? Actually, because there doesn't seem to be any obvious clubs immediately who seem to be immediately looking for a manager in League One. As you say, but it maybe actually ends up higher up. He's yeah. still got enough stock to go to the lower level Championship the side. I he? Think he, he could has. get one of those based on his yeah, based on his and his previous. You don't know what the new Hull owners are going to do either. When you know when they eventually take over, often they want they want a new guy. I'm scrolling down. It's always those two that that come up, and there's there is the potential. I don't think Nigel Pearson or Lee Bowyer would get sacked, but I think they're two managers that if they got more fed up would walk. Um, so, but. <laughs> It's a fool's errand trying to guess which championship job is going to is going to come up next. You're very very likely to be wrong, um, so I'll stop trying to do it. Um, right, where are we going to go next? Um, actually, I'll just chuck that in from Robert. Is it you up next, Seb? Um, we have been linked with a few Manchester United players. That seems. I don't think he's putting two and two together there. That seems like such an obvious contact to uh, utilize and thing to happen sure surely if not now in summer that will happen won't it oh, i would have thought so yeah maybe not so much this window given you know the size of our squad already but certainly in the summer you've got to think he'll be using his contacts to tap up the the best available youngsters because i mean you know the, the the quality of somebody coming through the the man united academy is going to be absolutely superb and they'll want to get them out for some some decent game time and decent exposure so surely there'll be a list already he might have given some of the names to, to ashton for this window but i'd imagine certainly in the summer when we've had a bit of a a few players released he'll certainly look to go back there and maybe bring in a couple the thing the thing is with that you know and bringing in people of that ilk is the louis barry experience isn't it in that they're gonna to have to be very 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 good if they're young to get in the team aren't they otherwise it's going to be another wasted wasted loan if you know what i mean they're going to, have to be ready and you know up and running and ready to go straight into a league one team at the age of whatever they are 18 which is going to be a hell of a player to be fair so to get into our squad as as it stands at the moment. Um, let's dive in. I think you've already given him a mention. He's going to get two mentions. Whatever happened to John Nolan at Ipswich, um, Craig? And obviously the more pertinent question maybe is what will happen to 
um, John Nolan in uh, this month or beyond? I'd imagine what will happen for the next six months is what will happen with the previous six months is not an awful <laughs> lot. You know, he's not even being really mentioned. If he gets, obviously, the guys ask him in the press, ask um, McKenna in the press conferences, and he's, yeah, he's nearly, nearly back, things like that. It just, I just think it's worth just writing off. You know, you've, you've as Seb was saying about the, um, the wage structure and things, he's included in our squad, 22 man squad whatever happens to be, and, and therefore he's included in our calculations, isn't he? It just seems to be a complete waste of time. But similarly, as Seb was saying about transfers and, and it being a bit tough at the, in this um, in this window, we we won't be biting our nose to spite our face in terms of we won't be letting him go with no one else to come in. Um, but it just seems a, a weird one. I, th- I think similar, he'll just be let... He'll get towards the end of the window maybe and he'll, and he'll be let go if he can find something else... Um, something else to get line himself up uh seb great question that um norman uh norman greenwald uh when do you think itfc will announce the first transfer either in or out and can i add to that will it be in or will it be out <laughs> um well we all assumed we'd do some business so you'd like to think hopefully something might come in in the next the next week or say so, hopefully it might be either you know maybe bond made permanent walton like craig said earlier not entirely sure they're going to make that one work so i guess it's one of those dominoes isn't it walton going could well start a few moves in because you know it frees up a squad place it frees up a loan spot and it probably frees up quite a chunk of wages i don't know possibly don't know what we're paying towards the wage contribution but you, you've got to assume we're covering at least half of a premier league contract and that maybe could get you a couple of bodies at league one level so we might see a, a bit of a domino where walton going might kick the kick the market into life for us um howard has asked me directly here thanks <laughs> because i'll give the most ridiculous answer probably uh ben what's a recruitment room well i think howard is referring to the following quote that i've got on my um screen over here while discussing his transfer strategy um on the spire podcast that chesterfield paul cook said I've just left a football club in Ipswich who didn't have a recruitment room in the summer. As I've left, still has no recruitment room. How are you supposed to recruit players? How? Um, so I'd assume there's a fax machine probably in the in the recruitment room, um, a, a sofa, um, maybe maybe a copy of Football Manager and a Rattle. picture. Of- a picture of Harry Redknapp. If it's a Paul Cook <laughs> recruitment room, a really nice coffee machine, um, I reckon, in the corner and um, lots of plastic cups. Um, I've got, um, who asked the question? Howard, I've got no earthly idea what a recruitment room is. I assume um, I assume he means, oh, what was that? They had it at Liverpool, didn't they? Like a recruitment committee. I assume that's what, um, that's what he means, um, yeah. Paul Cook. But... Um, Yes. Uh, yeah, you just wonder whether, and, and, and it's, it's something we've spoken about a few times on the pod. Is it whether he's instead in ten, God, instead of referring to actually, you know, being able to get transfers over the line, which we didn't have a problem with, it's more a case of whose actual decision was it to make which particular transfer, you know, because you know, as we've said time and time again, you can sort of work out that Raheem Harper and Carl Edwards were probably not top of. Um, Mark Ashton's list, but they were probably offered to him to say, you know, we can get this done if you want it done sort of thing. But uh, yeah, I think it's probably more intimate. There wasn't much joined up thinking behind the scenes, but there wasn't much joined up thinking when he joined the club. It's not, it wasn't anything new, was it? I do like the idea of a specific room with a yeah. sign on the door, literally saying recruitment room. Do you think, um, you know, when Alex Ferguson got Ronaldo and they were, they were in Lisbon, do you think he just balled into some office and said, right, close this down. I'm making this into a recruitment room right now. It's yeah. going to become my office, like Vince McMahon in whatever stadium he is in, in wrestling. Always has always has Vince's office, doesn't he, on the telly. Um, let's read out some comments rather than questions. I think we've got a few comments here. Uh, Norwood is our watered-down version of Billy Sharp. We'll always get goals. If he scores half the amount of goals Billy Sharp scored, <laughs> give him a new contract right now and... Because he was keep scoring until he's about thirty-seven, won't he? Uh, Rumour that Nor- uh, NCR, excuse me, is on Merseyside talking to a club. He's from up, from up that way, um, right. isn't he? Uh, maybe Norwood has finally started to settle his life off field and move on. Uh, we're now seeing his real potential when he is assisted properly up front. Yeah, I think we're good. Is that bits? No, someone typed that for him. Someone typed that for him, didn't they? Seb? Bits, let, let us know if you're okay, bits. Yeah. <laughs> 
Unbelievable. Uh, Mark, if we need to make room in the squad for numbers wages, what about the lesser spotted Tom Carroll? Not done anything wrong, but hardly pray. Uh, fair point, Seb. Do you want to pick up on Tom Carroll quickly? Yeah, obviously got injured, didn't he? And didn't really feature, but I guess he's got a bit of a link to McKenna from his Spurs days. I think he was one of the ones that he dropped, name dropped in the first press conference saying he'd worked with him before. So, you know, technically a very good player. We've seen it in flashes a couple of times this season, that bit of composure on the ball, but it's, it? it's only Spurs? a... Spurs? Yeah, it's only oh, a... Oh, OK, I didn't realise uh, that, yeah. Yeah, he dropped him in. He, said he knew him and Vincent Young from his time at, at Spurs. So, um, potentially, you know, again, it's only a one-year contract. So, maybe we'll just look to look to, look to move him on because that area of the field is pretty congested. He's been on the, he's been on the bench ahead of Fraser, is not he, in the last... Well, certainly at Gillingham he was. I can't remember Wickham, but he wasn't, he wasn't particularly great at um, Barrow away, was he, Carroll? Um, FBL track. Do you think Frey at the back is here to stay for the foreseeable, or will um, Kieran McKenna consider back four? He feels the work tactically. Um, he's talked about flexibility early on. Um, can I take that one, guys? I think it will. Um, <laughs> incoming back four at Bolton this weekend, then. But <laughs> it, we said a few times in terms of simplicity, and I, I think you might have suggested that actually, Craig, as well. Um, and having an extra option when we weren't getting that four-two-three-one to work. It does allow you to get the two bodies up front if you're struggling. It does allow you to fold back into a more defensive shape with your three. And you now it can become a five, can't it? Especially if you've got someone like Morsi um, in front. So I think it's kind of a good half measure for maybe where he ultimately wants to go. Everything we heard, though, was um, 4 3 3, 4 2 3 1 on um, McKenna. So I think it will be around for. A short while, and you know, then he'll then he'll start. Um, be interested to see if he does the old pull out a centre half at I don't know seventy five minutes and switch it to a back four, and you know, just start um, dripping that one in there. Well, if and when we're you, behind in a game, yeah, so it, it, we may well just see it because of the squad that we've got and the players that we've got. We may just see it till the summer, in any case, and then we'll know from you know, August the sixth. Uh, We'll know for sure what his formation is going to be because he's had a, a pre-season to, to get it into the players. You may well find out that's when the, the four at the back starts. Um, Chris, to make the playoffs, so Chris is a supercomputer, isn't it? Um, Town are likely to need 76 points, which means uh, 12 wins, five draws. So what's that? 40, is that right? Uh, 12 times three is 36, 41. If I did that up right, yeah, yeah. 41 in 21 games. So just shy of two points per game, three wins. For every defeat, can we do it? It's table topping form. Uh, Seb, it's, it's a lot to do, isn't it? It is, it is, yeah. There's so much traffic there as well. And you know, if you'd have asked me three weeks ago, I'd have said, Not a chance in hell, but football is all about hope, isn't it? So, I guess while we've got this bounce going, we can all be a little bit optimistic, but in reality, it's 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 going to be a hell of an ask, put it that way. But if we can, you know, if we want to, if we can make that, like Craig said, with the run we've got, if we can make that winning run into a five or six game winning run, Q defeat now at Bolton on Saturday, <laughs> um, with, a back, then, with a back four, with a back four, yeah, then we can really <laughs> hopefully look to, you know, move up the table quickly. But I think it's going to be a massive, massive ask. Dare I say, it, we need a, a George Burley-esque type run, don't we? We're well, you know, winning 14 of our last 17 matches or something ridiculous. Craig, like. the other thing we need is a low tide, don't we? We need, essentially, Wednesday, Pompey, Plymouth, Oxford, all to actually also be in good form and all to be taking points off teams slightly. Make it a bit of a bun fight and, and then maybe that possible 76 for sixth place drops to 74 or 73 and then... You know, yeah. things get things get easier then. But yes, and we, and we, we and we do play them all, don't we? I swear, I've, I'm just looking at the fixtures here. We've actually got Portsmouth, Oxford, and Plymouth one game after the other in March. So that, Lovely. Yeah, <laughs> I'll look forward to that, Craig. Um, uh, what else have we got here? Uh, hello, Ipswich fans. Is it better since last time I was here for the Barrow live stream? Well, there you go. Thank you, um, Alice. There, I think I think it's a Reading fan. Look, he says, please, Ben, please stop kicking me when I'm that sorry. Sorry, I've been posting some Reading. Just getting some opinion on uh, Reading um, today. Uh, what else have we got in here? Uh, there you go. Stephanie's got it sorted. Uh, playoffs aren't unfeasible. I hope so. I really, really hope so. Uh, skip intro, Seb. Um, or is it Craig? Whose go is it? Craig, I think. Uh, Craig, where do you think Selena fits in under K-Mac? That, number, that nice number 10 spot that Aluko's got? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, and I think he'd, he'd play it quite well. He's, 
you know, he's as intelligent as uh, Luco. He's got the same sort of touch and close control. He, he probably just needs a few games to get back up to speed, but he hasn't hasn't actually been appearing on the bench either, as we just assume he's still not quite um, quite match fit. But you know, having having signed him on transfer deadline day, whenever it was, you'd you'd have earned yourself a few quid if you'd have said that in uh, in January the following year that we'd be praising a Luco and hoping that he doesn't uh, get injured. And you know, Selena, we weren't even missing him, sort of thing. But yeah, I think. He seems to be a pretty decent fit for them. But then so does Chaplin, doesn't he? I'm not entirely sure Fraser does, but I think um, Chaplin, Aluko and Selina could all play that that current number 10 uh, role without much issue. Um, <laughs> here we go. Uh, go on in, Seb. You'll be pleased to miss this one. Nick. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> what do you guys think of Marcus Evans' um, possible takeover at Huddersfield? Um I got asked by a Huddersfield website to do some quotes on this. And the first thing I was very cognizant of was not to sound like a Bristol City fan talking about Mark <laughs> So I tried to be very, very balanced. And um, I always have Joe's words ringing in my ears. I thought he nailed it a few years ago. Marcus Evans isn't a bad owner. He's a hapless owner. Mm. His heart's in the right place. Just made a lot of bad um, decisions, um, trying to make good decisions. Seb, why on earth, having lost... <laughs> We look, we don't know the number. It could be as high as 90 million pounds. We don't know what the agreement was with in terms of what's been written off, what's you know, what was actually paid here. We've heard numbers, but come on, it's all speculation, isn't it? Why on earth in this time, Huddersfield as well? Um, Huddersfield are doing brilliantly in the last year of parachute payments, which they haven't really got to use because that funded a takeover. Championships completely broken. Anybody who gets near promotion and doesn't go up um, is getting points docked or on the verge of disaster. Why the hell would he want to do it all over again? It's bizarre, isn't it? Yeah, it's strange. You would think, you know, maybe learn his lesson and, and look to move on. But for whatever reason, if he, if, if there is uh, substance in the story and he's looking to, to build, then then good luck to him. You know, he was never, as Joe said, he was never a, a, a damage, well, he was a damaging owner in terms of what happened to us on the pitch, but he was never, you know, negligent. Or anything. He was just useless. He made really, really bad decisions. So I would be very surprised if he went there. I've got no idea what that means to his 5% in, well, that's been diluted, hasn't it? I think O'Leary came out of one of the AGMs that it's more like, one and a half or two percent now or something um so i've got no idea what that means to his, his stake in us but if he does go there good luck to him and hopefully he'll have learned some of the lessons from us and he'll you know surround himself with a more modern structure i guess the worst case is he goes there the parachute payments have stopped and you know he tries it like he did here for a couple of years gets nowhere and then suddenly he's right back where he started again so you know good, good luck to him if he does go there but if if i was him i would have learned my lesson and definitely definitely moved away from the industry all i'll say, say so, 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 so. I was, if I was his kids looking at my inheritance being spunked up, <laughs> spunked up the wall at Ipswich Town and then being spunked up the wall at Huddersfield Town, I'd be but questioning at, my father. At least he's got a Corberon's a kind of good young forward thinking manager. And Dean Hoyle, who used to be the chief exec, has just gone. I'm, I'm not sure entirely that you, you get a mixed view um, from Huddersfield fans on on that but at least there's somebody because we always thought that was a, a huge problem wasn't it that he never put the right person in between himself and then the manager and the the players and well, it's you not necessarily didn't put the right person he just never trusted anyone did he, he no ever trust well, anyone he, he trusted had Mick. He had, but he never yeah. he never backed Mick at the right time did he it was just his, no. his timing was always awful you know we always go back yeah. Richard sliding doors video 2015 January transfer window that was the time to do it and you know we hesitated and didn't do it and look where we are now but so he just never trusted anyone within the club to make the decisions that everything had to be signed off by him you know it's not as if it like the guys have got Mark Ashton here to say look it's your gig you live and die by it. So I think we never ever had that here, did we? It was always Marcus Evans signing checks for a bloody glass watcher that going in the kitchen. You would have think Marcus Evans would have liked a uh, Mark Ashton type character though, as in someone that's literally just going to run it um, for him. And um, you know, you've that... got to pay, you've got to pay big money to get those kind of people in, haven't you? So and you've got like Craig says, Seb, you've got to really trust them with your, yeah. you know, with with your money, but um, at least at least I, after, if if he takes over after five years, you'll get one of those interviews where he's looking at the side again with his eyes reading every. I brought, uh, every line. I brought that up. I brought that up in the interview. I did. I was like, we didn't see him for ten years, and then when we did, he was blatantly reading off a flip chart. But 
I've that I was prepared to die on that hill, and I have. Ipswich fans have beat me up for not liking that enough. So I've admitted defeat on that, and it was a bigger problem for me apparently than the rest of the world. But what are you going to do? Um, my wife says the recruitment room is like a casting couch for films. Ugh. Um, we'll move we'll move on from that, Michael. Um, yeah, Howard thanks me for my wonderful explanation. Don't Google, um, don't Google casting couch. No. Uh, is Ashton and McKenna waiting on Coulson to see where he is before bringing in a left wing back? That's probably a reasonable point, um, isn't it? We don't entirely know. Uh, Charlie, Walton and Bond, can we afford both? Um, God, I don't... This is why League One fans hate us, but I'm going to say it. Yeah, we can, but whether we'll get both of them or is is a different matter and um, what the uh, FFP calculation will look like in um, a you, couple of years' you, time is a different you'd think, matter You well. think that the wage that Bond's on, you know, we don't know, but you would think that the wage that Bond's on at QPR as a reserve, reserve striker isn't going to be a million miles away from what he'd earn as our top League One striker, would you? So, he... In terms of getting a deal done, you think that, and obviously we know the background and his interest in joining, etc. You think that'd be far, far, far more easier and far more likely to get done than. Uh, than I keep seeing Lyndon Dykes um, linked with people, which is concerning because if QPR were to sell Lyndon Dykes on January the 29th and didn't have time to replace him, you know exactly what they would they would have to do then as their um, their uh, sort of kind of. But well, he's in, he's in the team as well, so. Oh, they'd want to replace him anyway. Maybe I've debunked my own point there. Um, Michael, could you see a club coming in for Edmondson near the end of the window? It's a bit early, maybe, Seb, is it? Yeah, I think so. I think he'll definitely be here for the summer. But I guess I would be a little bit worried if we stay down, you know, and he keeps playing for the, the next four or five months like he has done for the last four or five months because he's looked an absolute class above. You know, every single week he's a solid guaranteed seven eight out of ten isn't he? he looks really really classy at this level and i would be worried that if we didn't go up this year then you know a bit of if somebody goes crazy and comes in with three four million quid they might well look to look to accept it and reinvest um uh, leo neil was marcus evans equivalent of ashton only he didn't trust him fair point um charlie adds as well evans must have ashton type so ready of course he must mustn't he you know these people all, all delegate to make that type of money, don't they? Right. I think we're just about there, guys. Um, we're at 52 minutes. We're we're happy to go another um, seven and a half minutes if there are any more questions um, to come in. In the meantime, please hit the thumbs up button. That really does help us out. I know that sounds idiotic, but there's algorithms and whatnot that when you hit that button, it ranks us a little bit higher and all of that good stuff. So do please hit that thumbs up button um down the bottom you can see all our socials as well um everything we do will always be free here but you can if you want uh, support our work we do have stuff to pay for including the software we're using right now um and you can support us via paypal um acast the support facility there in the acast app or you can support us right now on youtube super chat look where you leave your comments there's a lovely little dollar button and if you want to um donate we promise it doesn't go to my red wine or Joe's shirts or whatever hipster thing Mikey's doing in Surrey or um, Craig's Steve Witten collection of whatever Craig's collecting about Steve Witten or uh, Joe's Lego as well. Um, but yeah, please, uh, please do feel free to um, to contribute if you want to. Um, and yeah, there's all the socials ticking there. Any more questions? There we go. Um, Seb. New contract for Aluka. How long's how long's the contract, Seb? It was one year, but I presume there's an option. I'm guessing that will certainly be triggered. But yeah, they've got to be having those discussions shortly, I would think, because you know we all saw him in that Newport game. He clearly wasn't match fit, and we kind of thought weird signing to come in didn't really fit with the rest <laughs> of the model. Fish. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's going to not be really not be featuring much at all, and he's become one of our most important players. So I would imagine the extension would either definitely be triggered or maybe just you know improve his term slightly, and it's fully deserved because at the moment he's a he's a real real key member of the team, isn't he? Um, this is the worst part of the stream is that I'm going to have to apologise to Bits, isn't it? He's he's owned me. Uh, Bits, thank you very, very much. £4.49 on the Super Chat. Everything I said about you earlier was was false. Um, and you are a wonderful man and we thank you very, very much. But no, seriously, Bits, that's um, not the first time he's contributed, is it? So very, very kind indeed. Um, Craig, obviously, um, Seb's going to go into this on the preview show, but um, how are you feeling about... Um, uh, Bolton HCH says have fallen off a cliff since they smashed us at home. And 
Haven't they sold a few of their players to the lower divisions as well? I don't know. Seb will tell you that. Um, yeah, but Cap- no, I... Captain went to Stockport, who've got yeah um, loads of money now. And Owen Doyle went back to Ireland. Yeah, they've um, and they've got really low, really low, bad of injuries. So yeah, me and Rich will be discussing that. So tune in on the uh, the, the, the Friday pre match show for all that good stuff. Craig's going to give a really good spoiler now. He's going to he's going to he's going to tell you exactly what's going. You don't even need to watch the game, let alone listen to the preview show. Yeah, we're going to win two 0 <laughs> That's, that saved you an hour of your time on Friday night listening to Seven Rings. <laughs> um, what else have we got in the chat here, Dave? Um, I always think, what's the um, what's the Depeche Mode singer called, Craig? He's from your neck of the woods, isn't he? Yeah, Dave Gorn, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know not, pronounce so not it. Dave. I think I've had this existential crisis in the po- probably more than and once. No, on the no podcast. he's not from my neck of the woods. He's from Billericay. Where do you live? Is, is that the same thing? Oh my God. I am, I'm on the board, I'm on the north, north. I'm pretty much in Suffolk. I'm certainly not down that way near. How many miles away are you? Uh, I don't know, 40, 50. So. Oh, okay. Fair, fair enough. That's clearly big, not it's your big, neck of the woods. Big county, Essex. Is, is the, is it I county? don't know. I just, I just assume everyone from. Uh, I, he's a great front man, though, Craig. If if he you is. knew him, that that would be awesome. If you knew him, yeah. <laughs> Get him on the get him on the pod. I'll ever want it. Um, I think Ashton's plan is to sell Edmondson from the championship. He sold Webster from there. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? What was that? Three million quid um with two million quid's worth of add-ons and then sold him for twenty million. Twenty then. million, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Uh Robert, you lads have been fantastic. Thank you, Robert. Thank you for um uh, getting the questions in everybody. Uh quick straw poll then. Um don't do this with your hearts. Do this with your heads. What's the score going to be then on on Saturday? So we can give Seb the mood before he does the um, does the preview show. Get your predictions in. I mean, uh, Bits has gone back to form there. He's going for. Well, to be fair, I think the last time we were at Bolton, we won five nil, wasn't it? And against their kids, was that <laughs> the last? Children. Yeah, it was their kids, wasn't it? That was uncomfortable. That's wasn't when it? you weren't. That's when you weren't allowed to call games off for not having much of a squad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, do we get cancelled on YouTube for that? Is, does that count as a COVID comment? I don't know. Um, 3 1, uh, happily take 1 0. 4 0, 1 1. Dave Gorn was born in Epics. Epping. Epic. Yeah. Is that closer? Epping. Yeah. Epping Forest. No, it's not closer than me now. It's even. It's just further around the M25. It's right by the M25. I used to live in South Woodford. That's near Epping, isn't it? That's inside London, isn't it? Yeah, your your know. your your questions on, on metropolitan Essex, mate, are, are <laughs> flying over my head. As, as I keep telling you, I am North Essex, if not just nearly on the board. I'm rural Essex rather than me- weird metropolitan Craig, Essex. You, down that way. I think several agree. You're very defensive about talking about Essex, Craig. I, don't, I think I'm gonna. I think we have to talk about this af- afterwards. Um, two nil town, two nil, four nil, three one. Goodness me, six one. We are slightly overconfident here, guys. Three one, two nil. 3 0, um, uh, 2 1. There we go. Right. Um, that's going to do us. Thank you so, so much for your contributions. If you want to shout out, put it in there. We'll give you a shout out before we end the show. Craig, are you back on Sunday? Yeah. 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 Could go in Saturday. Yeah. Traveling up Saturday. So, so Craig, yeah. and I think Seb are going to be on the, um, on the flagship show. Seb will be on the preview show, which is going to plug in a minute. Um, <laughs> I've got to do one of my surreptitious. All being well, Craig could have something really cool for you. But um, as always, we don't like to break our arm slapping ourselves on the back here at Blue Monday. So when it's in the can, um, we will um, we'll hopefully do that. But um, yeah, Craig's hopefully got got something good for you in the next sort of week or two, which should be should be great. Seb, do you want to just give a quick plug for the preview show? Yeah, preview show. We're doing a pre-record tomorrow, which will be out on uh, on Friday in time for the, everyone to drive up to, to to Bolton. Make sure you tune in for all the uh, all the lowdown on Bolton, and make sure you tune in because for the first time, Rich has been knocked off the top of the uh, Room One Hundred and One <laughs> list. Whoa, uh, whoa, so, whoa, well, whoa, yeah, I know whoa, you're going to pipe whoa, up with your people's whoa. champion. Oh, 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 there. Okay. So yeah, he's he's now. I think we're going to end the feature now. I've requested the feature now be ended with my uh, my victorious reign at the top of the table. So can, tune in if not just to see him squirm for about an hour. Can, I think we should put Essex in room one hundred and one after, <laughs> after, after South this. Essex, South Essex, whichever your house is not in. Um, this will turn into a geo guesser 
pod. There used to be someone called Geocatcher who used to comment on our pods and then left us a really nasty comment after he stopped listening. Um, I don't know why that just popped into my head. Um, you can see how this stuff affects us, doesn't it? <laughs> um, thanks, Charlie. Thanks, Michael. Uh, who's going to Bolton? Raise your hand. Uh, thanks, Julian. Uh, Rich. RIP Room 101. Um, yes, in all seriousness, I know I've been mocking bits for the last um, half hour, except when he gave us some of his money. But do get your photo taken because um, he's, um, he's going to have quite the... Um, I, I don't know whether I can say it. He was going to compile these all in, um, into some possible thing that we can distribute. So um, is this not a football pod, not a geography pod? Well, evidently not. I mean, some people would say um, we know nothing about football, but I evidently totally know nothing about geography. Uh, thank you, FPL Tractor. Right, say goodbye, Craig, and um, something nice about Essex. Yes, goodbye, everybody. Um, I shall be yet leaving Essex for a few hours on Saturday, so if you see me on Saturday, come and say hello. Give us a shout. And I, um, I, I might go. I might go and see Bits, and he can not take my photo like he did in the, the Wickham game. <laughs> I think it was unbelievable um and said nice short journey for you you're not going anywhere near essex and that's the best way really isn't it christ yeah too right i can't stand the people <laughs> thank you everybody for watching um follow us at blue monday itfc um you can follow us all on twitter um check out the preview show um and we'll be back with the flagship show on sunday thank you everybody see you soon <laughs>